Hi everyone, it's been a while since we looked at our newest Swift um, MUD game. Um, and today we're going to add something I've been wanting to add to this for a long time, and that's uh, secure your shell or SSH support. Um, in the current version, we're using Telnet, uh, which is unencrypted, uh, meaning that also user IDs and passwords are all sent out in plain text. Um, so I'd much rather have uh, an encrypted channel, and that is what we're going to add today. And fortunately, there is a project that we can help us with that, and that's called Swift Neo Asset Shades. So let's start by putting this one in in our package.swift file. It's called Swift Neo SSH, and we can start from version 0 0.6.0. We also need to add it as a product to our dependencies. It's called Neo SSH here. And you can see that it uh, Xcode already pulled it in. So let's start by adding SSH support. Um, I used the example server program that's uh, bundled with this uh, package uh, as a basis. And so I have to admit, I'm not an expert on SSH and some things I just copied over because they worked, not because I can in depth explain why they are there or why they work. But let's not uh, consider that a big problem for now. So I noticed that they are adding a nice uh, shutdown uh, when when the uh, program is destroyed. I think this this is something you can do for any uh, new application. What really is specific is that we need a host key for our new SHH server. And I'm using a fixed key because I, otherwise I need to uh, uh, delete the, the SSH key every time I'm uh, restarting the program. In the example in Neo SSH, they use uh, a dynamically generated key. But because macOS remembers those keys, then uh, the next time you start, it will say it's not matching anymore and you need to manually change the unknown hosts file. It's a bit too much work for me, so I'm just uh, using the, uh, a fixed one. I have here one uh, in base64 format, uh, fixed key data, and this will be the Our base 64 encoded data. This will be a from here. This is an optional, but because it's hard coded, we know it always succeeds. So we uh, force and wrap it, and it will get a host key. This will be a Neo SH8 private key based on an ED key. And we can force wrap here as well because we are sure that this uh, is hard coded, so it should always succeed. So now we'll have we'll have a few changes uh, to our uh, server bootstrap. So the backlog and the SO reuse address can remain the same, but the child channel initializer will be very much different. So let's comment this one out. Create a new one. I have child channel initializer. Um, this will 
bring a channel in and this pipeline will be a bit different uh, because this pipeline will be focusing completely on SSH handling. So we won't see any of our not related handlers in here. Those will come, uh, come later. So the first one we need is a Neo SHH uh, handler. And this requires a role, will require it as a server. Um, and we will initialize using uh, a host key, an authentication delegate, and a global request delegate. So our uh, host key will be the host key we just created. Then we need an authentication delegate and we need a global request uh, delegate. This one. And these we uh, have to uh, create, these will create in a minute. We need an allocator. This will be our channel allocator. We need an inbound channel initializer. And this is something we will create in a bit as well. And we need an error handler. And this one we will create as well. Now we have our server pipeline. We can get rid of these child channel options. But we will add a couple of server channel options. Option level so socket and so we use address value one. This might be the same as this one and so be redundant, but I'm just not entirely sure. So uh, and um, in the example it works like this, so I'm just going to uh, be reusing that. Yeah, might be proto TCP. And we will change the default port to something that sounds a bit more uh, SSH-like. Um, apart from the stuff we haven't created yet, and this is the work we need to do in our main script. So to put all this other stuff in, what I will create is a new Swift file called SS, ssh.swift. And I will import Neo. And we'll import Neo SSH. And we will start by uh, creating the error handler. So we'll create a final class uh, error handler. This will be a channel inbound handler. We'll have tape alias for inbound in. This will be any, and it will have one function error code. And when we catch an error, we'll print it out. And we'll close it uh, our context. We will also create an enum with, with error uh, messages we uh, uh, understand in the server. We'll call it an enum SSH server error. This will conform to the error protocol and it will have a couple of uh, cases. We'll have a case invalid command. Case invalid data type, a case, valid channel type, a 
case already listening, in the case not listening. And when we now go back to our main Swift at least, the error handler should no longer be complaining, I think. Right, so let's go and create our newest server user authentication delegate. So this is normally where you would handle the uh, login activities uh, and validate user IDs and passwords. However, we already have an implementation for that in our game. So we'll create one that's not really doing any login. So we'll call it a no login delegate. Uh, this will and be a server user authentication delegate. And this will have some of our support for authentication methods. And this will all meaning that any authentication method that the client might want to use, we simply say we uh, accept it. But when we receive a request, all we're going to do is we will return the success message. So this one will always succeed. Uh, meaning that when you look in, it will always uh, work. It will always at least go through. So let's take our no login delegate and pass it in here. Uh, we also need a global request delegate uh, to handle uh, global requests from, uh, uh, from uh, SSH. This is also something that's not needed when doing Telnet. Advantages, we have, there is a default implementation in the global request delegate protocol that we can use by simply creating a class mobile uh, mod global request delegate and this will conform to global request delegate and we will keep it an empty uh, class. We will just lean on the default uh, behavior in the delegate protocol. So we'll create one here. And then we need the inbound channel initializer. And this is where we need our old pipeline. So I'm copy pasting this code here. Basically, this is where we're going to set up uh, everything uh, that is specific to app applications. This is uh, simply a function called SSH child channel initializer, this takes a channel and a channel type. And this returns an event loop future of type void. And we will switch on the channel type. And we will want to support the session channel type. So if we and get the request to create a, a channel of type uh, session. Then we will return a channels pipeline with added handlers for all the handlers we created before for uh, our mud game. And in any other case, for the default case, we'll simply print out that we channel type connections are not supported, only session channels are supported. And we will return a failure. So we'll return on the channel an event loop, make failed a feature with our SSH server error invalid channel type. Let's see, so now if we go back to main, we can here pass in the SSH child channel initializer. This should, this should at least build. Okay, so our build is succeeded. Let's try and run it. Okay, so it's listening. We can here see the address in the port. So we should be able to SSH into it and we need to specify the port. And we will uh, say we 
uh, SSH to a local host. And we immediately get an error. And the reason is, uh, the, the error itself is quite verbose and explains pretty well that we are uh, trying to send out, send out uh, SSH channel data, but we found IO data. And that's because if we look at the first handler we're working with, that's our session handler, this one expects a byte buffer to come in and also sends out a byte buffer here as well. Whereas the SSH handler brings in uh, an SSH uh, the channel data as the inbound type. So let's work on this a bit. So if we import SSH here and we change our inbound in data type to an SSH channel uh, data, the out type can still be the text command and we can also add a type alias for outbound out and that can also be an SSH channel data. And we can use that one to uh, send our welcome text. Uh, we will get to this in a bit. I want an extension to our SSH channel data to uh, quickly wrap a byte buffer in uh, SSH channel data. So we don't have to change that much code we already have. So we create a new initializer code that takes a byte buffer and it will first create an IO data based on the byte buffer. And then it will create a one based on the IO and uh, UI data, IO data. The type will be a channel and the data will be IO data. So in our session handler, uh, we can now create the channel data. And this will take the byte buffer and this will be our out buffer. And we can write and flush. And then we can use our wrap outbound out method because we defined an outbound out there and this will take our SSH channel data and no promise and if we now run again and we SSH to this local thing we, we get our message back uh, so this that's a good start notice that we do get new lines but uh, we don't go back to the uh, to the, uh, uh, the 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 uh, the first column, so that's something we need to fix. And also, it's no longer re re responding to our user input, but that's because we also uh, uh, commented out this uh, this stuff. Um, what we need to do is we don't just need to do new lines; we also need to do returns. So we have our string here. I'll take a uh, create an. SHH welcome text, and this will take our welcome text and replacing occurrences of. We'll look for new lines and we'll replace them with new lines and uh, carriage returns. Also, we will be putting this one here in the welcome text and we will be adding a return here as well. So if we run again, now at least we uh, have our text the way it used to be, but we can still can't uh, enter any data. So let's go back and uncomment all this stuff. So we're now getting in a different kind of data. Uh, we're no longer getting in a byte buffer, we're getting in SSH channel data. So we need to unwrap that in a, a bit different way. We now have this in buffer here uh, that has a channel data as type. Uh, let's see. So first, let's see. Let's make sure that it actually has a byte buffer. 
because that's something the uh, an SSH channel data can have. And we want to uh, uh, get the bytes out on the in buffer the data. And if not, then we can say, well, for now, let's simply do uh, a crash in a sort of loud way. By getting an unexpected read data. We should also check if the channel is the correct type. Else, we'll apply an error code. Is it a server error invalid data type? Now we can get a string, and the string will be slightly different. It will be uh, we can simply get a string based on byte buffers, and these are just the bytes. So now we have our string back, and. We should return after this one, since we can no longer uh, continue in a, a useful way. So let's uh, also print out this string for now. So let's try and see if this helps. So I can type now. And now we're trying to send out data. Let's go to our response handler uh, because our response handler also needs to now send out SSH uh, uh, content data. So let's instead of sending out a byte buffer, we send out an SSH channel data. Let's see. So we have our out buffer. Uh, we write our string here, but I, we're sending out something slightly different we will have our channel data and this will be an ssh channel data and we'll use the byte buffer uh, initializer again oh, and this requires neo ssh and the byte buffer will be our out buffer And instead of sending out the out buffer, we'll send out the channel data. Let's try again. So, now we notice uh, a couple of things. First off, we're getting uh, it's spamming these. Uh, you need to be logged in to use these command messages, and we see lots of single letters in our console. And the reason for this is that instead of our telnet session that uh, uh, brought in an entire line so an entire sentence uh, at once we only get individual letters and that mean, means that we need to do uh, we need to track uh, the sentences ourselves manually so what we need to do is our session needs to be augmented with this uh, with a string we can build up we call it current string and it we defaulted to uh, empty and i'll create a helper function uh, erasing current string that returns the same session but only with the current string uh, set to zero again and i'll show you why in a minute so we have an updated session this will be ourselves. We will turn the updated session. In the meantime, we'll take our updated session and set the current string to empty. And now let's go to our session handler. And we don't need to print out this anymore. So we get our session. Perhaps it already exists, otherwise we create one. 
And what we'll do is we'll take a session dot current string and we'll add the letters to it that we just uh, received. And then we'll check if uh, the string contains either a, a new line or the string contains a carriage return, then we will be creating a command. So we have a command here. We'll make a command based on uh, the session's current string. And we will pass in a session erasing the current string. That way we don't keep Oh, uh, adding new text to it the next time uh, uh, the player types a word. Then we will send out this command. If it doesn't contain this, then what we'll just do is we will write and flush uh, the string we got in. And this way we will get uh, the input echoed back to us. So this should be already a bit better. Let's see. So now I can type Luke. That's a command that you need to be logged in to use, but let's say I log in. And now it says welcome back. And notice again that uh, uh, the formatting is still not correct, but at least it's functioning now uh, as we expect. So let's go to our response handler. And I think that's the last thing that we need to do. We will start by taking uh, the green string and adding a new line before it as well. Also, we will create an SHH green string, and this will be the green string replacing occurrences of new line with a new line and the return carriage. And so it's sort of the same as the uh, the earlier one that we, uh, the, the thing we did before. And then we will be adding the green, uh, SSH green string in the buffer. This should help a lot. So let's log in again. Let's try and log in. Let's look around. This is working. So let's go south. This is working. We can close the session. We can also create. We can create a user. We can say something. Let's log in a second time and so on. Okay. So this still uh, this still works. So I think that's it. That's it. But now we do have SSH uh, support, and uh, the cool thing is that almost all of the code remains the same. It's only where you're entering our pipeline. Uh, and where you're, where you're executing the pipeline, there's a big difference uh, because you're now using SSH channel data instead of the raw byte buffers. And we need to handle the fact that we're no longer getting an entire uh, line at once uh, from Telnet, but get individual letters. That means we need to keep track of uh, strings ourselves. Uh, I think that's it for now. Thanks very much for watching and have a good day.